Hello, my name is Barbara Dyke. I live in Leander, Texas, which is just right outside of Austin, Texas, north of Austin, Texas. This video, I'm going to show you the color black, the color block scarf. It is commonly known as the wizard scarf or the Harry Potter scarf. It was a scarf similar to this was in the first movie, the Harry Potter. I wrote this pattern years ago, and then someone asked about if anyone had one, and I put this on my a Yahoo group. Barbara Dyke Pass Up Lessons Yahoo group and then I started tinkering with it to, get to improve it so that will soon be up also now this first scarf was knitted the original pattern and that is with the 70 every 70 rows you change the colors and this the rest of them were knitted with every 80 rows to get a larger size I do include an Excel spreadsheet telling you when to change your colors now this yarn I am using here is Charlene Schaefer's yarn. It's Tam Three Plies. You can go on the internet at um, knitnatshops.com and she has 51 colors of this. Now some of the pictures don't truly represent the colors. This uh, maroon looks kind of washed out in her pictures but you see what a rich rich color this is. So on the scarves these are the colors that were kind of in the movie with the Harry Potter scarves. So this one is maroon and bright yellow and this one is bright yellow and the black and then I used hunter green and light gray and then I used the navy and light gray for this one. Now the scarf I'm going to knit for you in a minute is going to be rural blue and gothic gray. My husband's niece, a great niece, my husband's great niece picked those colors out so that's what she wants her scarf in. Uh, I wanted to show you that these her, the three ply goes a very very long way uh, I'm going to move these right now and oh and I wanted to show you about how far the yarn goes so uh, also on my uh, Yahoo group is a seamless hat which um, I put out now this scarf here is not quite finished. I haven't, I haven't taken care of the ends yet. So, but wh what you need is if you're looking at this, this second color goes a very, very long way. So I could get four full scarves and four full hats out of a, and the color block right there on the green one. And this is how much yarn I had left over on these three colors so it goes a long ways so and her yarn is like 1895 uh, I think it was 1895 for a, a thing of yarn and then plus shipping so for this amount of yarn I got all the green and all the navy and all the gray you see and I still have a little left over for scrap yarns to use f to do some scrapping stuff now on this color block scarf we're going to start knitting. I gave you the wrong color. We're using the royal blue and the gothic gold. I think I accidentally said gray instead of gold. So it's the royal blue and gothic gold is what we're using. So we're going to bring up, start off we're going to bring up uh, 25 needles on the left side of the bed and we're going to bring up 26 needles on the right side. So we got 25 to the left and 26 to the right. We're going to put our rack and handle up in the 12 o'clock position so that we can match up our needles to make sure we do have the, all the correct needles in work on the back bed and front bed. So see my last in point to point and point to point. Now I'm going to put the rack and handle back into the 6 o'clock position. Okay, we got our lock set on four, stitch size four and a half on both the front and the back and we've got it on in on both the front and the back and we're going to pick up our color number one which for this scarf is the royal blue. We're going to knit one roll across and if you're wanting to use your E6000 electronics it is uh, cast on two and it is knit technique 107 so if you want to use that you can but we're not today. Okay, we're going to put in our cast on cone. I always use my cast on cones because I tend to be kind of forgetful. 
and this has saved my bacon more than once so I'm going to go ahead and put on my cast on cone now you notice that there's no strippers in, in this in the machine because your cast on cone could mess up your stripper so we don't have any strippers in we're going to bump it up three clicks one two three to five and a quarter then another click one two three to five and a quarter and then CX and CX we're going to knit two rows now we're going to go up another three clicks one two three to six stitch size six then one two three that gives us stitch size six here then in and in and one row and that completes our cast on okay so I'm wanting to make sure that that cast on was a good clean cast on okay now that I've got my strippers in I'm going to hang my weights uh, most of the time I hang my weights after the very first row I knit but this time I forgot so I'm going to get them hung now so I'm basically on row count zero stitch size six CX on both beds so now I'm going to start knitting my scarf I'm going to knit four rows and circular knitting and got a little loop caught so I want to make sure that my tension is good so we got four rows here now we're going to set up the eyelets for the uh, fringe later on so basically we're going to start with number one to the right and then every third uh, every fourth needle we're going to put into uh, for an outlet so we're going to get one two three and then bring it up so that's needle five one two three so here's number the fourth one one two three so I'm just going to go all the way across I have the numbers on the patterns for you so you don't have to count now we have one needle still in work this one's going to become an outlet now we're going to come over here and go one two three so every fourth needle will become an outlet for this right here <coughs> and again we have an extra needle now we're also going to do this on the back bed but what you want is you want your your eyelets you want your thread to move in most especially on these ends we don't want to move that over to here so we're going to move that and you're going to leave the needle in work so we're going to go ahead and we're going to move them over so okay so we're just moving them over we're going to get over to this one and now we're going to start moving them back in and there's one thing I told you I'm forgetful so I hope you all forgive me I forgot to put my rack and handle back up in the 12 o'clock position I've only knitted four rows so it's not going to be a major catastrophe that I didn't start off and have that in there <coughs> so now basically I'm emptying the same needles on the back bed as I did on the front bed so it's a little harder on the on the back bed because I'm trying to make sure I don't uh, so it's this one right here and it's this one I'm trying to make sure I don't block your view just that one just that one so now we're going to be doing the basically the same thing on the back bed that we did on the front bed we're wanting to make sure that we move the yarn to the inside that that latch hook was not open so it didn't move very easily so all you do is you you pull it off and you pop it onto the next needles and then you flip it and it flips right on I'll do that again you push it through then you go to the next needle and then you flip it off so 
we got two more we're going to move to the inside and we're going to move this one now we're going to go start moving it in this way That latch hook's not open. I gotta get it open. Sometimes you need to use your thumb. Let's see, there we go. Got it open by pushing it up a little bit. So now we can flip that onto it. Now let's do a visual to make sure that we got all the correct needles empty. So the, that's correct. So I can, I'm bringing these. Okay, that's the one I want. So I'm wanting to make sure that I matched my needles and emptied the correct ones, which I can tell I did. So far, so good. Okay. So I want to make sure my needles are, are even, ready to knit. Kind of put them all in there. Now we're going to continue knitting uh, in, in CXCX until uh, we get to row count 80, because I am doing the... Um, uh, larger larger scarf so okay I have stopped at um, row count 70 to show you a little trick that I do when I knitted this earlier I did not you see how it's completely free well, sometimes these can warp in the wash and the dryer and then you end up with your not a good straight so only on the darkest color do I do this on about row count 70 10 rows before I get to the end of the color I take and I just take the purl stitch off the front bed and pop it onto the back bed and I don't do a whole lot of these now if you don't do it exactly on row 70 don't get upset if you get all the way to row 80 that's fine too you can go ahead and do it then it will show a little bit on your scarf that you did it but it won't make a major difference but this won't show at all and this is to keep the scarf from biasing okay so we're at row count 70 I'm going to knit 10 more rows in this color and I seem to be having a little trouble with my machine today it's picking up loops so the loops I can hide afterwards but I want that loop to come down. I don't want it in my way. So I'm going to grab it with my yellow tool. And I'm just going to put my yellow tool on it. Let my yellow tool be a little extra weight. So I keep tightening this up. But it's... Um, these machines are getting older. So little loops are coming a little bit more often. So let's hopefully we got that settled. <coughs> Okay, we're at row count 80, so now I'm going to change over to color 2. Okay, I got color 2. I'm going to release my blue yarn out of, out of my holder. And I'm going to knit 80 rows in the gothic gold. And I'm not going to uh, do any stitches uh, like I did in the blue. So I'm just going to be do straight 80, 80 rows. I uh, knitted about, well I'm at row count 107, but after telling you about pulling down your yarn, I forgot to. Now that I've got some gold on, my navy is there, I'm going to go ahead and release my gold yarn, and I'm going to grab my navy yarn, and I can break it or not. I, I tend to not break it because I'm wanting to try and save some of that yarn up. So I've got that just sitting there right now for me to grab later when I change colors again. Because the next time I use navy, that's when I'm going to want to hold down some yarn in order to uh, not have that tight deal and give me enough yarn to work through, okay? So we're going to continue to knit to row count 160. Okay, I have knitted to row count 160, so now I'm going to re-pick up my bright blue, my royal blue I mean. And I'm going to make sure 
that I got a lead here so I don't get a loop so what I'm going to do now is I'm picking up my royal blue and I'm holding it myself underneath with my right hand I'm just holding me a length down and I'm going to knit very carefully three rows okay now I'm going to put a uh, close pin uh, on 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 this what I'm holding in my hand right now I have my very favorite clothes pin it was a gift so I can't tell you where I got it from but I love this clothes pin as a weight so I'm going to put it on my my blue yarn just just gonna let it sit there and hold it for me so now it's holding it down for me and now why I'm realizing it so that's I'm sitting over there I got everything out of my way I'm going to use my yellow tool and I'm going to grab the gold. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the gold while I can. And I'm going to stick that in my holder. And now I'm going to continue to knit about 70 rows and then do that again because I'm on the blue. I'm going to do my attaching. So I'll show that to you one more time on how to do that. So I'm actually knitting to row count 240. So I'll stop at 230 and show you that again. Okay, we're at row 230, so once again, I'm going to pick up the purl stitch from the front bed. That one doesn't want to get picked up, so I'm going to go over here and see if I can get this one picked up. I want to pick up the whole stitch and then pop it onto the back. And it doesn't matter how many you do, you know, about four, five, six, whatever, across. So you might want more, you might want less. So we're just going to go and just pick on them up we don't want to split the yarn if we can keep from doing that so I'm going to come over here so I pull the needles down slightly so I can get to that purl stitch and it's a little hard to see in the darker colors but okay that's all we're going to do for that so I mm, want to line up my needles a little make sure they're nice and deal and so we're going to knit another 10 rows now a while ago my husband says I think you made a mistake you forgot to put your racking handle back in the six o'clock position and I'm going no when I'm doing circular knead knitting I want it into the 12 o'clock position so that our crosses between the back the front bed to the back bed is very minimal if we were in the six o'clock position we would have more of an angle so you want that carry across to be as small as possible so that's the reason why you put it into the 12 o'clock position and you're only knitting front bed back bed front bed back bed so you don't have to worry about your needles crashing okay so we have done 240 rows so we're going to get ready and do our color change with my machine I always got to adjust my yarn <coughs> I'm going to grab the gold yarn I'm going to hold it like I did under the machine so that I'll have some some yarn to work with to work in and hide and I'm going to carefully knit three rows and that helps me make sure that that blue all knitted out I'm going to move my clothes pin up to the gold <coughs> excuse me and then I'm going to grab my navy uh, my navy my royal blue yarn and I'm going to hang it now wait now I'm going to knit uh, I'm just going to continue knitting changing my colors every 80 rows until my yarn hits the floor and then I'm going to show you how to roll up your your yarn and then I will continue to knit until we get to the last group of color uh, with the and do the eyelets again okay so I'm going to just knit until I until my yarn touches the floor as you can see my weights are almost touching the floor so I'm going to pull my clothespin off I'm going to take the weights off and I'm going to roll the scarf as tightly you know I'm not pulling it down making it too tight and then I bring it up to here to where the solid not the cone the solid so I'm going to take and I'm going to hook 
the, the hook into the yarn and then put it lay it on the cast on cone so you're just gently hooking it through the open loops of the knitting about even with with where the cast on cone is so I'm just going to hook it in and then let it sit and that's how you roll your comb and it'll, the, it'll get bigger and bigger and you'll keep doing this until you reach uh, the end of your knitting and just keep on rolling it up and not letting it touch the floor and lose lose the advantage of your weights okay now I'm going to continue knitting we're going to knit 17 stripes uh, we're on our fifth stripe right now and I'm going to knit to row count 1280 before and then I'm going to make the eyelet I'll be in my last stripe when I come back so I'm going to continue knitting until I get to the 17th stripe row count oh I'd like to you it's row count 1356 I, I looked up at row count of the stripe 16 which starts at 1280 so I'm going to knit to row count 1356 okay we have completed uh, knitting almost the whole scarf we have just about finished with the number stripe 17 we're at row count 1,356. Now, of course, our row counter only says 356, but we can add 1,000. And we're going to set it up to do the eyelets. So, again, we're going to take the number one on the right, and we're going to bring it up, and then we're going to go every fourth one after that. And again, we've got one needle remaining over on this side. Okay, now another way you can do your eyelids that might make it a little bit easier is you're going to take this one and go in, like we do, because we want to head towards the center, and then see how this is out of work. Immediately go grab this back stitch and move it over. So, whichever method is easiest for you. So, I like this method a little bit better than the other one because I feel like there's less room for mistakes. this is the number one needle <coughs> excuse me I always have bad allergies now we're going on to the left side so now we're moving turning it and moving it in back to the center of the knitting so We're going to knit our last four rows and then we're going to cast off. So I'm going to take and I'm going to pull my yarn. I'm going to pull me out some working yarn. And then I'm going to tie it off on the lever there. So I'm going to use my double eye balkin and if you don't have a sh if you're short on these you can also buy get this from Charlene Schaefer on her website so she's primarily a brother deal a dealership uh, but she's got good yarn and these these double eyed balkins will fit any machine uh, I think she has a bulky size too. I think I treated myself to a bulky 
double eye balkan with the last yarn order I did. And so when next time I order some yarn, I think I'm going to treat myself to a couple more of the standard gauge. It's so nice to be able to find some tools to, when you need them. So I'm just moving every, all the stitches from the back bed to the front bed. <coughs> <coughs> mm. 